kidding. This meeting is being recorded. So um, good stuff for you guys today. And, um, you know, I like to throw in a little bit of uh, stuff outside of the material um, here and there. And um, it's some of the stuff I work with with um, my own clients and um, so forth. And I just wanted to, to so, sort of preclude this. It's, it's an exciting time because we're getting into the part of the book where it's, it's about the extraordinary results uh, and so forth. So that's an, that's a, an important part. But um, I wanted to talk to you guys about like, you know, challenges and, and wins with, um, with your brain, with your mind, with your, what I would call the monkey brain. Because sometimes people don't think that I have that. Uh, Tiffany knows I have it because she's close enough to me. But, um, you know, I teach a lot of this stuff. Nevertheless, I'm subject to the same like crazy bunch of thoughts, you know, waking up um feeling crazy or or getting crazy throughout the day and stuff like that that you guys are and uh it's just a human condition it's not you know it's not anything uh you know it's not your your fault so um how do you deal with it i uh i like to meditate and um i i honestly believe if you're not meditating um you're missing out you're you're actually like disempowering yourself big time. So, what does meditation mean? Really, um, like sometimes that 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 uh, word is loaded for people. Like they are, um, they think it's like oh, that's woo woo or fucking hippie or whatever uh, type of thing to do. But what it basically is just a brain reset. So, like you, you just sit for like 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, nothing more than that. And you just turn your brain off. And so all the shit that you're worried about and the fires you're trying to put out and the, the, the um, problems you have and all that stuff, just, you just turn it off. And the way you do that is by focusing on something that doesn't matter that much. So it could be like the sound of the, uh, clock ticking or the air conditioner going or whatever and that's it believe it or not as stupid as that sounds it works miracles and I sometimes do it myself two three times a day so if you did it once a day honestly if you did it you did it conscientiously once a day it would make a huge difference in your life if you're not doing it already so Anybody got thoughts on that or anything else with the one thing that they've had wins, challenges, or uh, comments on in the past week? Um, I'll comment on meditation being integral to sanity um, for me for starting my day and hey, also in, yes. um, even if it's short ones in transition times, but if when I make an attempt to skip it, um, I definitely can see the difference in my productivity and also just in how nice I am to people throughout the day. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, 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 it's all, all encompassing really. And, and what we tend to do is, is um, either don't do it or, uh, or delay it in a day. And the sooner you can do it, just, just give your brain a reset, whatever you want to uh, call it. Just give your monkey brain a rest, right? Cause like, uh, otherwise we're no better than um, like my dog Caesar, right? He's like, he's a Doberman. If you ever saw the, the movie up, you know, like he's like squirt, squirrel, squirrel, like, like ADD totally. Right. Um, and we're a lot like that, believe it or not. So in order to separate ourselves from, from the, uh, the dogs and the other beasts and whatnot, you know, we can deliberately focus on, on something and, the way to, to get focused on what you want to get focused on is to unfocus on everything else. So it's just a it's just like a reset button. It's like uh, when your phone or your computer or your tablet is not acting right, it's lagging, it's being weird or whatever. You just power cycle it. You know, you turn it off and turn it on. And um, what what I find is that that gives us access to um, 
what I would call cosmic Google or like a sort of a download of inspired action then to take uh, from there. So you shut it down, you let it flow and just, you know, like I said, you're going to focus on something that doesn't matter to you. It's take a break from everything that matters to you and you focus on something that doesn't matter to you and you all of a sudden start getting good ideas and you come out of that um, meditation with some inspired action to take. And it may be your one thing or maybe something related to that or, or what have you. Well, well, you know, for me, it, it really kind of boils down to being mindful and I probably two or three times a day do what I call my checkup from the neck up. And if I'm not feeling exactly like I'm in the zone that I want to be in, I just stop my action and I sit somewhere and I get really intensely into what my surroundings are, whether it's the sound of the clock, the people in the kitchen that are cooking food, you know, wherever I am at the moment and really, really key into being there. And then I realize whatever kind of feeling I might be having, whether it's anxiety, whether it's anger, whether it's, you know, being overwhelmed, if it's not in the room I'm in, or if it's not in the building I'm in, well, then it's really not real. It's something that's in my future or something that's in my past. It's not in my present. And I just let it go and I get back to what I need to do. And it really helps me get back to what is important in the now. Right. Hey, great. So if, if um, you know, I mean, maybe meditation is a check out from the neck up or what have you um, or something along those lines. But it's, it's definitely, um, however you do it and it's comfortable for you, I definitely recommend it because without it, I mean, I, I'd honestly probably be dead. So, um, <clears throat> can I jump in here now? Please. Okay. So I'm excited because the meditation part, I found my thought stream biofeedback system. So that means that I can actually use a device that lower, that actually gives me feedback in real time as to what my, my brain is really doing. So, yay, I found it. And you know what? It's the exact same price it was 20 years ago when I bought it. Winning. Um, the second part, Brian, to make things easier for the meditation is a thing called the nine-part breath. Um, it's just a real simple thing where you just close off one nostril and then breathe up and down three times three times the other side, and then three times up and down. Nine parts. So you just do nine breaths. Yeah. Enough to, look to, refresh, to refresh your brain. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because breathing is a huge part of this. And um, I guess there are, of course, different methods. But bottom line is, like, fear, okay, is exhilaration without breath. So if you're fearful or nervous or anxious or whatever, and you do this brain reset or meditation, and you breathe, all of a sudden things take, they, they, you get perspective on things. So um, anyways, that's what I want to add about that stuff. Um, I'm working on something also that I want to share with you guys. That's called the me first movement. And I think you're going to like this because you guys understand. A lot of people are, aren't going to like this, but I named it specifically the way I did because I want it to be controversial and want people to, um, you know, get into the uh, dialogue about it. But the me first movement is about putting your oxygen mask on first if the plane depressurizes. Or, as Tim likes to say, as a lifeguard, save yourself first. Because what the fuck good is it if you go out to save somebody and you both drown? All right. So the thing is, you have to put yourself first. And we have so many stigmas against this in society and uh, like, well, 
I could go on forever about that and, and just general memes in society. And when I say memes, I mean mind viruses of like what you you should do or shouldn't do. Okay, I don't, I don't mean like a, a photo with text on it like my kids think it is. <laughs> right? But um, so what I'm what I'm trying to um, put forward with this idea is that you have to, like you really have to have your self centered through methods like meditation and a lot of other things. Um, center yourself, and then you could actually be of help to someone. You know, like make money yourself, and you could actually help someone else make money. Make um, you know. Uh, make quality time count you could actually do that for someone else or what have you so really um, our society is 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 like set up to say that's selfish but I'm here to tell you be selfish okay put your oxygen mask on first and then you can be your best for everybody else what can you share if you don't have like if you don't have time if you don't have um, love if you don't have uh, money if you don't have you know everything what can you share with the rest of the world what's your impact going to be really so um, we've talked about the sort of uh, conundrum or, or pa uh, paradox of like um, you know um, you know, don't, you shouldn't be selfish you should be interested in what I, what, um, I want you to do Right? So does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. But bottom line is um, be selfish in terms of uh, self um, oriented and make sure you're okay first. Make sure you're feeling good, you're centered, you've taken care of your meditation or your exercise or you know, your, your hydration or, or um, you know, whatever you need to do. Then you might be in a position to help somebody else. Otherwise, you're really not. You're just like I don't know, like like uh, a pinball machine or something, uh, bouncing off like in some sort of uh, codependent weird way. Does that make sense to you guys? It makes sense to me. I tried it the other way. It didn't work. It doesn't work, right? <laughs> And if you don't trust me, you can trust her. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. You can Doesn't ask my work. kids. It does not work. It does not work. I took so, care of a whole lot of people for a long time until yeah. I was. Yeah. So so you really you really have to like you really have to look after yourself first. Oxygen mask on. And then we'll put the uh, then I can help you. But if I'm if I'm dead, I can't help, you know, if I'm die dead or dying, I can't help you. Um, in the plain analogy or what have you. So, well, that makes sense to you guys because you have to be ruthless with this shit when it comes down to the priorities and, and your, your time blocking, your calendar and so forth. So, like, uh, the more you do it, okay, because it's not a perfect process. I'm not perfect at it. Nobody is, probably. But, like, bottom line is all these different things pulling us in different directions. We got to say, no. I need, you know, I need 15 minutes to fucking uh, shut my brain down and breathe so I can be of use to anyone else or whatever the case is. Um, it just might be like I need to eat or I need to take a shower or need to fucking uh, drink some water or take a walk or whatever the case is. But bottom line is, um, you know, if, if, if we're not at our best or as good as we can be like 80 80 20 rule again like we're not at our best 80 percent of things um you know we really can't even though we might go through the motions we're not we really can't uh be that of that much use to to other people that we want to help and our loved ones and that we want to support and stuff like that does that resonate with you guys at all Damn, I'm going to call you out a little bit. You had a little bit of a rough week. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, totally, I'm, I'm laughing my butt off. I'm attempting to be respectful. Like, yeah, you've so nailed it because there's so many people making so much money telling you you're third. 
I remember that little sales speech. You know, you're no. not first, you're not second, you're third. No, no. no. We're gonna if you guys if you guys want to join me, we're gonna make some waves with this because people are gonna be like, me first? What the fuck? No, yeah, you first. Not you. I mean, I'm not calling it you first on purpose, but it's me first because people are going to be like, what? That's selfish, but that's this, but that's that. But what I said was if, 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 if putting everybody else's needs and, and desires uh, first hasn't been producing the results you want and you're open-minded enough to look into something that could, could um, gonna get to you what you want and them and be better – for them at the same time, let's talk. So, this anyways. is mind blowing. We're gonna have so much fun with this one. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna have a lot of fun with this. Awesome. Yeah, because Dr. Phil's gonna have you on. <laughs> All right, good. He's have you on. So, let's get to the material. Anybody else have anything before we get to the material in the book? Yeah, I think you should aspire for like an Oprah Soul Sunday, not a Dr. Phil. I'm just. Well, you know, it's all, it's, you know, I got to get on everything, right? There you go. <laughs> Bad publicity. Me first. Yeah, I know. Not Dr. Phil. Fuck Dr. Phil. All right. <laughs> so, um, Oprah Soul Sunday. Okay, I'm with you. Too. Did it, any of you guys see that in your, your news feed when I put it up? It's, it's only a half-baked idea so far, but it's not really. It's in, in my head, it's not, but. I haven't put up websites and shit like that. Anyways, can you see my uh, Kindle book? Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. All yes. Right. All right. Cool. So, um, so last week we finished up with uh, with uh, the end of chapter twelve. Uh, how we're thinking big and specific. Blah blah blah. blah. So, um, this is the third part of the book. It's uh, uh, it's. In my opinion, the most significant part, once you understand the base material or the um, foundational, uh, I guess would be a better term, material, and why you're doing what you're doing, okay? Um, so this is really key here. And um, I cannot tell you how much I have had to fight with clients to actually figure this shit out and what i mean is that that you know we've all heard this shit about goals and purpose and this and that so many times that it's just to the point of being annoying but however um this iceberg is really key because what we see is people's productivity and actually i'll move to the next one here maybe This is foundational work is what I'm saying. And this keeps you out of the chasing shiny objects syndrome. This is a better one. Okay. So what we see is an iceberg, obviously, guys. So um, we see people's profits and productivity above the water. Okay. That's what's visible. But what we don't see is their purpose and priority. And without the purpose and priority, we don't get the rest of the uh, the you know cash and prizes here. <laughs> so until we do that foundational work, which is it's a pain in the ass. I I know it is. Okay, I know it is. I know it's a pain in the ass to sit down and try to work this shit out. But once you do and get it dialed in, it it really produces some amazing results. So this is where I try to dig down with for people like, all right, well, wh what are you really trying to do in this life? Spend your heartbeats on, et cetera, et cetera. And then it goes to the priority, which is uh, in our analogy is, is your sword. Your calendar is your, your shield. Your priority is your sword. Your purpose is your armor. Okay. So as we go through this, you know, once you have those things set up and have a firm foundation, then you have the productivity, you know what to say no to, you're not getting pulled in all these different directions and being um, distracted by everything. You're more or less centered and 
nobody's that way all the time, but it's just the 80, 20 rule, right? Can you, can you, um, spend the time on the 20% of things that produce the 80% of the results and choose those things. Because if you can, you're going to be, a, you're going to be like, um, 10 X everybody else. Cause they're all like notification here, uh, email here, M mom can't up, can't turn her computer on over here. All this bullshit. You know what? No, just say no. If you have notifications turned on for your emails, um, your, your Facebook, any social media, um, anything going on beeping, at you that's not a top priority turn that shit off because it is not serving you it's only distracting you it's only taking you off purpose off point etc etc so all this stuff um, if Tiffany calls me it's priority but not as much of a priority as um, like something like it's 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 like the next level below what I'm trying to work on and no offense Tiff, but like I, I will find out if it's an emergency with the kids or something, but if it's not, I'm going to say, I'm gonna call you back, you know? So we have to do this. We have to be, we have to keep a ruthless calendar. Is this resonating with you guys at all? Hello. Yeah. Hello. So are you, are you identifying where you can cut the fat out of your um, day situation, notifications, distractions, and things like that? Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I'm working on it. It's, it becomes the busier I get, the more critically important it becomes. And yes, obviously that's why I said to you last week, it's time to, to redo your calendar. Because look, guys, we all may put stuff on our calendar that we want to do or think we should do or what have you. But as we get bigger and busier, then we have to really, you know, fine tune it. So it's a worthwhile, boring, fucking, you know, I, I guess not sexy exercise, right? Like doing the goal setting for now is, is a, a somewhat not sexy um, exercise of foundational work. But the bottom line is, what you could do is from eradicating corporal punishment for kids, uh, someday, you know, in the next 10, 15 years, to where you're at five years, to where you're at one year, one, you know, one month, one week, one day, you bought a bottom line come to, um, and this could apply, you know, I, I just went through this with a client today, you know, um, in terms of his business, cause he fucking fought me on this so long. And what I got him to is like, all right, well, this is what I want to make in terms of, uh, money this quarter, what have you. And this is what, this is how many, um, conversations I want to have. And this is how many posts or emails I have to send out or, or, or PMs. Um, you know, like direct messages I needed to send out to have that many conversations, to have that many sales, to have that many enrollments, to do that. So that's sort of how it breaks down, like um, in terms of a business, running a business. Okay. But you're, you know, things might be outside of that in terms of what we're talking about. But um, bottom line, if you just take it from the, um, you bring the someday thing of, I want to, I want to eradicate addiction or I want to um, help uh, youth um, entrepreneurs be successful or I want to eradicate uh, corporal punishment for children, et cetera, et cetera, whatever case is. So you just take it and goal setting to now is just bring it more granular, like bring it into the present because it's not that like thing that's way out there that just keeps getting pushed out because otherwise what happens? It's pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. That's just how it works for us. So. Thoughts? That's what happens, right? 
Yep. So it's the that like quadrant two stuff that just gets pushed out because it's important but not urgent. So you got the the firefighting stuff, the real like important and urgent stuff, and you got the um, urgent but not important stuff like phone ringing, uh, notifications from social media, what the fuck everybody else is doing on social media, your news feed, um, emails, blah, 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 blah. Just cut that shit out. Seriously. Otherwise, you're fucked. I mean, you can just go be fucked with everybody else, but you don't need to be. All right, so um, this chapter, Living with Purpose, talks about the whole, like, uh, Christmas story, Scrooge thing, okay? He just, he had a, he, he was he was productive, but just in a very um, impersonal way. So it's a matter of, you know, and I like this, like Tim and I were talking about this yesterday. So financially wealthy people are those who have enough money coming in without having to work to finance their purpose in life. It's basically like, you know, whether you want to be a um, millionaire, billionaire, what have you, the point is, if you're if you're free enough to not have to work to finance your purpose, and that's that's pretty much, I think a, a good definition of wealthy. Um, you guys may have comments on that, whatever. But it's not about like a dollar amount in the bank, so to speak. But it's it's a matter of, well, can I um, have freedom? And none of us are going to have freedom if we don't master our time. Okay, we are in the time space continuum and that's how it goes. Um, he talks about how um, happiness happens on the way to fulfillment. So like try to be happy with the process. It's not like I'm gonna be happy when I have 10 clients um, or I'm, I'm gonna be happy when I have X, Y, Z. It's more of a matter of like, I could be happy along the way. And that's an important concept right there. What's the big why? You know, we're talking about the purpose, right? So, um, and I love this too, because right here, this, this number three here, absent an answer, pick, pick a direction. So we talked about like kind of, um, you know, your one thing or your one purpose or your, your um, direction. Pick a direction that feels good for you. It doesn't have to be the ultimate answer for your whole life, but it could be something like teaching, coaching, writing, or it could be mentoring, or it could be, um, you know, helping people in my job or whatever the case is. So you get a direction, take a couple steps, and that's another thing Tim and I were talking about yesterday. Like you don't see the next step or you don't see the next options until you take a step. So you take a fucking step and in the direction you think it should go. And then you can make new decisions and reevaluate and, and retune your goals and stuff like that. Make sense? Yep. So it says pick a, pick a direction, start marching down that path and see how you like it. Absolutely. The purpose without priority is powerless. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, it means that you have a, a, a purpose, but so you have your armor on, but you have no sword. <laughs> so basically, it, um, the way this is set up, and we'll get into time blocking later, but if you don't take your purpose and work it into a priority or um, a success list, and a, a one thing for the appropriate time of day and or weekend or whenever, then you, you don't know what to say no or yes to. And it's just information overload. It just comes at you and there's things pulling you in all kinds of different directions. There's some stuff we can't control, guys. There is. Like, I love my kids to death and Tiffany knows like they will just come in and interrupt 
at almost any given time. Okay. And that's awesome. But you know, um, the more she can kind of armor herself up and prioritize and let, let them know what she's doing, less that'll happen. And we all have stuff like that, right? Like I have a Nudgy uh, dog over here. He will just come whenever he wants. I'm surprised he hasn't come, you know, just now. And he just thinks he, you know, needs food or water to go out or whatever. And believe me, he gets it all the time, all that stuff. He just but, thinks he needs food or water. Yeah, no, he, no, he just he thinks that. You know, he, he just thinks it's, you know, he just he does, doesn't have it and he thinks he's shit <laughs> or, or whatever. And um, he just shows up. And it happens during my calls. It happens during, you know, uh, calls with other clients and stuff like that. And, you know, whatever. Uh, or it can happen anytime. Um, I could be relaxing and he comes over and he just needs to be, thinks he needs to be a pet or whatever. You know, whatever you have in your life, okay, there's kids, there's, there's um, dogs and pets, there's spouses, there's whatever, but the more we can sort of um, armor up and be organized and be able to say um, no or not right now and still you know, attend to, to those responsibilities, of course, but um, it, it's important. Like, if, if we don't have these things set up from the foundation, then it's really hard to say no or yes to stuff because, as we've talked about many times, everything we say yes to, we're saying no to something else and vice versa. Well, you know, that's where the time blocking, too, becomes so important because if you're, if you get distracted by your kids, your dog, your spouse, your whatever, as long as they're part of your life and, and some one thing somewhere in your life, and they know that there's a time block where you're going to give them what they need, the food, the water, the attention, the petting, whatever it is, as long as they know they're going to count and they're in your calendar somewhere, it's easier to tell them to take a break, step off or whatever, because yeah. they know that they're in there somewhere. Yeah, yes, big big point here. So um, at some point in this book, Gary Keller recommends to block out your your personal time, your vacation, your time to rest and recharge first. Okay. And it's a, it's hard to do, believe me. But if you do it, um, and, and you know, so personal time, family time, stuff like that. So if you do that first, okay, which is gonna be counterintuitive, like some of the stuff is, um, and then put your work blocks in around that, you'll know, you'll know everything's taken care of, like it's all in the mix, and it's gonna be gotten to, and then you can also communicate that to, like you said, the people that, you know, your loved ones, stuff like that. None of this is trying to discount the importance of your loved ones, your, your kids, your spouse, your, if your dog, your loved one, whatever. Um, Tiffany I, and I have different views on that, but I guess he's okay. Um, <laughs> but bottom line is, like, if you put that stuff in first, you know, like, the stuff that you really want, like, that is most important to you, that you really want most or really need most, um, is in the, on the calendar. And then obviously we all have to work, give or take. Uh, so then you put that in and it's much a much better design. Has anybody else scheduled well, their- you, know, you, can, you can share that calendar with, I mean, I guess it's hard to share it with a dog and let him know that he's, <laughs> he's got time in your life, but you, yeah, can yeah. Share it with, you can share it with a lot of people and say, look, you're on my calendar. Yeah. You know, here's that block where you count right now I'm doing something else. No, it's, it's, it's exactly like, well, you know that you can say that. Like, it's very easy to reference and say, look, um, look son or look wife or look whoever. Um, I am blocked out now for this. And in two hours, we can do that. Because that's where you're blocked out. I got you blocked in two hours. Yeah. I have you, I mean, you are, you are a top priority and I have you, you know, I have you on my schedule and it's just in an hour or two. And so let, we'll do it then. And there you go. 
I, I actually had, I mean. Why is it so dark over there, Tiffany? Because the sun is setting and the lights aren't on. Okay. It was sunny when we started this. We're, I know we're in the same city here. <laughs> 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 All right, good enough. The sun is All setting. Right. It'll be dark in 20 minutes. All right. um, but I had success with that over um, just the past couple of days with um, my son is I have a very full schedule and he is also very interested in his YouTube channel and he needs some assistance with that. And yeah, guys, my kids, my kids have their own YouTube channel. And we're wrapping it up right now. So it took me, it's taken me up until this week to actually get the idea of like, since he's super excited about it again right now to say to him, I know that you're excited. Every morning we can take a look at my calendar. We'll pick out a time that we'll work on it for 30 minutes. I commit to doing that with you, but we're going to figure it out. So you know when to expect it. So you don't come in every five minutes and say, are you ready now? Are you ready now? Yeah. And it has worked. Not only have we actually gotten more done on the YouTube channel um, because I didn't push it off consistently. I got it on my schedule, but it worked. Yeah. And yeah, right. Brian, yeah. the only difference we have is you actually think the dog does understand your schedule and it's the dog. I think he should, but <laughs> it's exactly. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's stop talking about because he's gonna come over here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um absolutely great, you know, great example, great example. So we we're we're being selfish so we can be better for so we can be better for other people. Uh, that we care about rather than less good because if we're getting pulled in all these different directions and we're getting distracted and we're taking more time to go from task to task as we you know study in this book it doesn't help us at all if we don't feel in control of our day um, you know how are we really going to be present with the people that we care about okay so this is all about really it's all about you guys in terms of you being okay and, and good to go and then taking care of your responsibilities and the people that you care about. All right, we're not excluding them, we're, we're, we're putting them in first actually and, and yourselves in first and then working around that to get the work done that we need to in order to obviously pay the bills, et cetera, et cetera. So once you get that part, it's, it's, it's really, big brian one of the key things you want to be looking at is, is the more that we say no the better our yeses are going to be so this way we can a hundred thousand fucking percent thank you well it is a point that needs to be made because people you got to say no you got to say no you got to say no you, you, you get numbed out to it but by saying no like in tiffany's example your son's youtube channel her yes now means something that means that he'll listen to the no's in the future. Right. So the no's mean no, and the yes will really mean yes. Right. And, well, and the key part of that is is a good point, which is the following up with, with then integrity, like, okay, if it's going to be in an hour or two hours, then we actually fucking do it in an hour or two hours, right? So then all of a sudden there's, there's trust, and like, you know, Covey talks about the, the trust accounts, like, the tr like a bank account, right? So you're, you're making deposits and withdrawals in that in relationships and so forth. So when she says, um, we're gonna do it at this time and they actually do it at this time, then all of a sudden, the next day he's not so anxious that it's gonna get done because he gets that it will happen when she said it will happen. So that's really important. Good point though, for sure. And um, man, like, no is so powerful. Um, I have said no to like, I've just been doing it more and more and more to things that are just not like, for me, it's, it's like, it's a hell yes, or it's a hell no. If it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And by doing that, it creates space. It, it frees up bandwidth and creativity and brings it like brings in somehow the universe um, more opportunities and bigger and better things. Okay. But sometimes it's not going to be, um, it could be a, just a, a not now, right? You don't have to just say like, 
to ever request from somebody, um, no one ever nunca, right? You can say, um, not now, I could do this on Saturday. Or you could say, no. And you don't have to explain, but you can if it makes sense to, you know, in terms of um, the relationship involved, right? But just feel free to opt out because everybody's shooting stuff at you, like this way, that way, every way. So if you say, you know, no or not now, or can we do it this way? Because there's, there's ways to modify things, right? Like maybe you're not gonna go see um, mom-in-law in the hospital every day or, or every day for X amount of hours or something like, you can modify things a little bit just to work out what you're trying to do so that you can be more present when you do. Because I would advise you to, when you're working, be working, and when you're not, be not, not working. Like be off, just fucking forget about it. So that, that's the thing. So if you can, if you can um, properly time block and, and prioritize based on purpose as the foundation of the iceberg, then you can really be on when you're on and really be off when you're off and be present with your personal life. Like we, we, um, we're, we're trying to schedule with the kids to go see uh, the new Wreck-It Ralph movie. And we could have tried to squeeze it in today or, um, or Friday or what have you, but we decided to go on Saturday when it didn't like have to be fit in between Tiffany's schedule, my schedule, and the kids' activities. And it just made more sense. So they were okay with that, and we were okay with that. So, so that's what we're going to do. But bottom line is like, you know, people are going to request stuff from you all the time. Uh, my kid, like our kids have requested all kinds of stuff that, you know, <laughs> like they, they just do it because they're kids and, and you know, like one of them wants a, a sc electric scooter that turns into like a, a mini bike and all this stuff. And I like it myself. I, with my one, but he like, want it, anymore. it doesn't. <laughs> okay, that's good news. But he like, you know, fast. he said it doesn't go fast enough. He won't be able to keep up with the other kids on their bikes. Oh, and of course, it would. They, they can't, those kids on their bikes aren't going 15, 20 miles an hour. Anyways, but um, like, so like, you know, like kids are a perfect example, right? They're just saying like what they want, right? So they want uh, an Alienware gaming computer, and they want this mini bike scooter thing and they want this and that whatever and um you know requests are coming at you okay could be your spouse could be your work could be your um your church could be your community what have you but you got to look at like if you don't have your calendar blocked out with already your your um family time personal time to um rest and recover your own personal growth and recovery uh, like um hobby time and stuff like that, creativity time. If you don't have that shit already blocked out um, and your work time, concentrated work time, then you don't know what to say no or yes to. So you end up being over obligated to something that's not serving you that well or them that well, really. Okay? Believe me, you're not the only one that can lead the church group, Jimmy. Believe me, Tammy, you're not the only one that could lead the scout group. Tiffany, you're... you're you're not the only one that could lead the group either. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm <laughs> but, I am. Uh, I, and, and I applaud all those things, okay? But here's where we're talking about getting into extreme productivity and fulfillment and impact of purpose, priority, Productivity and profits. So we gotta just take that knife and or that sword and slice that shit. You know, and, and I think like anything that's that's really good fine foundational practices like scheduling, which you know I was bad at for years and years, 
if I use that and I teach it to people around me to start making their own schedule and getting their own purpose and priorities into their schedule, their own downtime into their schedule, they get better understanding as to what I'm doing. And I mean, it's like teaching somebody how to budget their money. You yeah. want to teach your kids to do good things with their money. You teach them how to start making a schedule for their lives. And they'll sometimes say to you guys, no, <laughs> I got something yeah. else on my schedule. <laughs> oh, and that exact thing happened the other day. Um, my youngest son told me that um, we talked about like, am I going to hang out that night or whatever? And he said, um, because for me, I wanted to, it was a Sunday night, which is generally kind of like my planning and, and, um, and so forth time. And we were together. That was when we were up at Paris Island, Tiffany. And so Brian Jr. says to me, um, no, I think it'd be good to have a little time, um, you know, time, to myself or what something along those lines. And I said, I think that's great. You know, I, I supported that because we have this whole stigma again, to circle back to the beginning of the conversation, we have this whole stigma about taking something for ourselves. But if we would just get over that and take the something for ourselves, whether it's an evening or an hour or 15 minutes from time to time to ourselves, then we can be so much better for everybody else. And once you see that and the power of that and then start enforcing it, like keeping appointments with yourself for the, that purpose, shit changes big time. So, I see my boys are, are trying to get Tiffany's attention already. <laughs> so uh, we're probably gonna wrap this up. Did you guys get, got anything else for now? I know we only, I think we just did one chapter, but that's enough for now. I thought they were <laughs> off the, off the screen and it would not look like I was distracted or not doing my one thing. They are off the screen, <laughs> but you're not off the screen. I see you looking around. That's it's all. all good. It's all good and it's fine. And it's not a perfect process, but the more you fine tune it to the 20%. I always think it's funny that I can be sitting here staring, talking at my computer, wearing headphones. And they'll come in and say something and I'll say, I'm on a call. And they go, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> well, I guess you never know. But Make a sign. <laughs> yeah. On a call. Yeah. I tried, I tried shutting the doors, like, but they knocked like, the door uh, down by accident. Yeah. So. Very cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, good session. Appreciate you guys coming on live, and uh, I'll catch you guys next week. Let's keep the conversation going in the group. Sounds good. Cool. Anything, last thoughts, comments, questions, concerns? I'm good. All right, cool. All right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.